Welcome to Plonker of the Week. Number three this week is Nigel Farage. The odious scrotum-faced former UKIP slug and now GB News dung peddler pivoted his xenophobic stance this week, placing all of his British laid eggs in his British made basket to attack the policies that aim to reduce fossil fuel emissions and prevent climate change. And whilst I don't want the ice caps to melt or penguins to become extinct, occasionally when I see Nigel's self-satisfied sweat-soaked kisser, I wonder if maybe Armageddon would just be a sweet release for us all. One of the most prominent politicians of the last decade, Farage has stood for election to the House of Commons seven times, but has never won. Which is startling because we've seen how low the bar is to become an MP in this country. And despite the British media giving him more airtime than loose women, good old Nigel couldn't even reach that. Although we did get into the European Parliament, which I presume is a bit like Eurovision where we just send all the shittest ones for a laugh. But from UKIP to Brexit and now Reform UK, this man has been in more parties than Charlie Sheen. What's next? The GFB party, gammon face bigots, or maybe the I'm not racist, but party. Anyway, just as our dependence on Russian energy becomes a political hot topic, so Nigel begins his fresh campaign for another referendum, this time against net zero emissions policies, which, just like Brexit, would benefit the Russians no end. Hmm. Hmm, funny that. And whether he's colluding with Moscow or not, I know for a fact that Nigel Farage eats crisps on the toilet. Before we get to number two, don't forget I'll be on tour around the UK this April, May and June with my brand new stand-up show Role Model. You can get tickets by clicking the link in the description or visiting samaverycomedy.com. Number two this week is Roman Abramovich. Who would have thought that the man who got rich off the back of fraudulent tactics and ploughed his dirty money into British football for the last two decades would leave in disgrace? And it's never a ringing in endorsement of virtuosity when serial dick splat John Terry puts his unwavering support behind you. I bet even Mr Abramovich was telling him, John, take that tweet down, will you? And while you're there, can you stop banging me wife? John Terry, of course, the latest celebrity to put his brand behind these newfangled non-fungible tokens or NFTs, which I'm pretty sure nobody understands and it's just another way for rich people to squiddle the money away. But Abramovich, his money was gained through incredibly dubious practices. He has close links to Putin. But hey, as long as the team are pushing for silverware, who cares, right? And just as Abramovich is getting kicked out, so English football are welcoming the Saudi government with open arms. Because if you don't believe that sports washing actually works, these new owners in Newcastle could ban women from the stadium and have public beheadings at half time. But as long as they're pushing for the Champions League, nobody's going to bat an eyelid. Before we get to this week's winner, if you enjoy my videos and you'd like to see more, you can join me on Patreon for loads of exclusive content, early access, exclusive merchandise, and you can help support me create content and keep it all 100% ad-free. Check the link in the description. And this week's winner is Pretty Patel. Being the daughter of immigrants fleeing persecution, you'd expect Pretty Patel to be slightly more sympathetic to the plight of, well, immigrants fleeing persecution. Wrong. As the other nations of Europe showed the level of compassion that gave us all hope for the future of humanity, Britain just looked the other way, like a tight-ass minge bag pretending to tie his laces on the way into the pub so he doesn't have to buy the first round. Pretty Patel and therefore Britain have been as useful as a condom in a monastery because nobody, including those fleeing the Ukraine to our foreign secretary herself, knew where these visa offices were or when they were open, with Miss Patel even giving out the wrong details and sending people on a wild goose chase. And this isn't some 1980s illegal rave where half the fun is trying to find out where it is. This is serious shit. How does someone as nasty and incompetent as Pretty Patel get top job after top job? Did the Tory party hierarchy notice her on some team building away day when they all had to build a raft and Miss Patel forced her teammates to build the entire raft for her before subsequently drowning them all in the shallow water and rowing away on her own? Because in modern Britain, you don't need to be intelligent to work in government. You don't even need to have an agenda, a philosophy or or strongly held beliefs. You just need to be a slippery twat of the highest order, willing to push, shove, bullshit, and bully your way to the top. And maybe I'm getting old, but I remember when tokens used to be fungible.